So we're going to go ahead and get start, started here this morning. Um, it's uh, we've got some a hard stop at 4:30, so I want to make sure that we have enough time to present everything. So I'm sure people will kind of filter in as we go on. Um, so first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, um, for coming. This is the uh, video face-off uh, for distal pancreatectomy. Um, we have a, a, a big agenda of things to get through. Uh, the concept for today's uh, uh, video is that. Uh, we, uh, we would take distal pancreatectomy and we would break it into five or six different uh, components that we thought were, were uh, of interest or critical to the procedure. We'd have two or three short videos for each of the, of the components presented by our panelists, uh, and then we'd have a few minutes for discussion of each of those topics. And, and we're, we're um, happy to take questions from the audience, love to have it be an interactive uh, event. Uh, but it does only give us about 15 minutes per, per topic, a little less than that because we're getting a few minutes late start. Um, so for, I want to apologize up front if I have to cut some uh, discussions off uh, a little bit short because we do have to be out of here at 4.30. Uh, and the goal, was, the goal of, the, of the event was to bring out some areas of controversy or, or debate uh, in how you approach distal pancreatectomy. It's a relatively common, you know, minimally invasive distal pancreatectomy is a relatively common procedure now. Uh, but it's, it's, there, there's still a lot of points that really haven't been worked out in the literature, and so I think this is an, a tremendous opportunity. You're going to have uh, six uh, experts in the field of, uh, that, that do, do a lot of this, have published a lot on this, have shown a lot of videos on it, uh, and you get a chance to, to ask them some questions. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start. I'll go ahead and have the panelists come up, and I'm going to do a quick introduction. So the format, you'll see, you'll see the, uh, the areas that we have uh, uh, are agreeing to discuss, port placement to entering the lesser sac, where should you transect the pancreas, uh, pancreatic transection techniques, laparoscopic versus robotic, uh, and standard versus a ramps approach. And so you can see that's quite, a, that's quite a, an aggressive agenda to try and get through here in, in 90 minutes. The, uh, the the uh, panelists up here, uh, yeah, I, my name is Paul Hansen. I'm a, a, a medical director for surgical oncology at the Portland Providence uh, Medical Center in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Mike Kendrick, who you all know is the, the chair of subspecialty surgery at Mayo Rochester. Uh, Melissa Hogue is a, a, a well-published uh, pancreatic surgeon in, with robotics at the Department of Surgical Oncology at UPMC. Uh, Dave Kuby, a professor and director of surgical oncology at Emory. Uh, John Stoffer, again, well published in, in this field. He's an HPB surgeon at Mayo Jacksonville. Uh, Matt Walsh is a professor and chair at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and Amir Zuraikat is the co director of the Pancreatic Cancer Center at uh, UPMC. A uh, quick disclosure slide is really nothing of, of consequence here, but of note that uh, Melissa has uh, gotten a number of research and education grants, which she's put to good use, uh, both from intu one from Intuitive and one from SAGES. So the first uh, topic that we're going to discuss here is port placement. Port, port placement is often overlooked uh, in its importance when, when you're thinking about how to approach a minimally invasive pancreatic uh, or distal pancreatectomy. Uh, patient size and weight, uh, the position and, and the size of the tumor, uh, the involvement of, of adjacent viscera, all important components that may affect your port placement. And so uh, we're going to have Matt Walsh and Melissa Hogue uh, start us off with this conversation. So, Matt. Yeah. 